Hi guys, let us talk some opinions and some arguments. So we're starting off with just some plain old opinions for the first three. Now, I bet you can already see what I'm going to point out. Hmm. My first question is, how do you actually spell Eurylicus? I hate his name. However, the answer is this one. So when you are doing names, make sure you're double checking. But let's take a look. Eurylicus thinks Odysseus is a reckless leader. Now, I only pulled off the claim on this one. If this is a good claim, it should be an opinion. It should be the student's opinion, and it should be based on a reasonable understanding of the text. So is this an opinion? Eurylicus thinks Odysseus is a reckless leader. Maybe. Is it the student's opinion? Um, well, either Eurylicus thinks that or Eurylicus doesn't, but we can't really debate that unless one of us is wrong. Now, if we take this off and just say, Odysseus is a reckless leader. Now that's very debatable because now we're not trying to say, okay, it's all about what Eurylicus thinks, which only Eurylicus knows what he's thinking other than perhaps he really picked a, a bad brother-in-law because Eurylicus is actually Odysseus's brother-in-law. Uh, he married Odysseus's younger sister. And my guess is at this point, he's thinking, wow, this family probably should have married into another one. But yeah, so right now, the problem with this is by phrasing this as what someone else thinks, it's not a clear student opinion and it's not as debatable. Get rid of those first two words and that would be an awesome claim. So Eurylicus was not a bad man. What do you think of this as a claim? Yep, this one is pretty darn good. Now, it's always better if you state things directly. So it's better to say what Eurylicus is rather than what he is not. So if you were to say something like Eurylicus is a good hearted man, that would be stronger because instead of saying what he's not, you're saying what he is. But as it is right now, that works. Okay. Odysseus's crew is very greedy. What do you think? Yep, that works because you could make an argument either that yes, they are greedy or no, they just are looking to get paid for the work they've done. They've been at war, they've suffered, they've earned some payment and Odysseus should be ponying up and paying them. So this is very debatable and it is the student's opinion and it is based on an educated reading. So that is claim. But of course, an argument is not just a claim. What are the three parts of an argument? I'm assuming that you got claim, evidence, and commentary. So let's take a look at a full argument this time. The crew members are too distrusting. They did not believe that the bag Odysseus had was full of wind. Instead, they believed it was filled with silver or gold. They could have clinged to some trust in Odysseus. However, their greedy thoughts prevailed. They allowed their distrust to keep them away from home longer, proving, the tr uh, proving that the crew members were far too distrusting. So, opinion. Right now, what do you think of this opinion? Yeah, that's looking good. We can argue about whether they're distrusting, whether they're too distrusting or just reasonably suspicious. So that works. Next up, we have evidence. So there is actually a rather significant problem with this evidence. And I'm wondering if you can guess what it is. 
Okay, some of you are going to get that and some of you aren't, so no points on that one. I'm not going to take points away because you wouldn't know this problem unless you had had a teacher teach you. And that is a citation, like this one right here, only touches the sentence that it is on. So this right here is the only sentence in this evidence section that is actually cited. However, is this a specific event or a specific detail that came out of one specific place? Could you take your finger and pull up the exact book where that happened and put your finger on it? Well, the answer is yes. If something is very specifically coming from a text, whether it's quoted or not, it has to be, yep, it has to be cited. If you do not cite specific information, it is considered plagiarism. So we would have to have citations everywhere. We would also have to be a little more careful with some of the spaces. That's a little thing. But do you see how the parentheses got left behind here? That's because there's an extra space and you should not have a space between the name and the parentheses. They should all tuck up there together. Same here. Okay. So now that we have the citations fixed, and that's one of the rules for evidence, it has to be cited. My next question, and the most important thing for evidence, does this evidence prove distrust? When you look at this, do you go, yep, that is showing them being distrusting. Yeah, I would agree. That is distrust. So that supports the claim, which means it's good. It's now cited, which means it's good. So my next question is, it does it correctly embed information? Well, if I read this out loud, does this all flow together? They could have clung going to change that because I don't want to read it out loud again when it's wrong. They could have clung to some trust in Odysseus. However, their greedy thoughts prevailed. Yeah, that all flows together. So overall, what do you think of this evidence section? Yep, I would say it's pretty good. Now, let us move on to commentary. They allowed their distrust to keep them from home longer. Oh, we have a problem. That is almost sounding like more evidence. So I know that that kept them away from home longer. You don't have to tell me that. So let's not summarize the book. So we're going to get rid of that. So proving the crew members were too far too distrusting. Okay, that's not a complete sentence. And when you look at these two together, is this comparison? No. Is it contrast? Mm, no. So I don't have a reasoning type. Now, I do like that I have a return to the topic right there. But the problem here is that there is no actual reasoning type. So the student is falling back into simply telling me the story. And that you can't do. You have to bring yourself to the table. So this would be like children distrusting their parents on a road trip. Like the parents, Odysseus had every reason to bring his people home quickly. And all they had to do was trust that. But they couldn't. They didn't have any trust in their hearts. Now, instead of simply 
telling the story. Instead, I see a reasoning type there where I see the student's voice and the student, in this case, mine, inability to spell correctly. Yeah, that would be nice. Pay attention to those little underlying squigglies, please. But now it's like, okay, this is now explanation. In your commentary, I should see something of you coming through. By the way, that's probably why most of you weren't asked to do commentary in grade school, because when asked to bring yourself to the table, sometimes little kids tend to just like literally start talking about themselves. So I want to see your reasoning about why you believe your claim. So this right now, at now that it's rewritten, is this comparison or is this contrast reasoning? Okay, it is comparison. It's comparing Odysseus to something. Which words in this tie back to that opening claim of distrusting? Yep, so at this point, that's a really strong argument. So let's take a look at another one. Odysseus's crew does not trust his leadership. What do you think of that opinion? Yeah, I can see where this is a claim because it's the, the student's opinion. Um, however, it should probably be phrased so that it doesn't sound like a fact. So it would be stronger to have something like um, Odysseus's crew appears to distrust his leadership um, because that appears to would then be debatable. So, but as a claim, it works. So let's take a look at the evidence. They listen to Eurycl I hate that name. Eurylochus's disastrous advice to drive away the best of Helios's cattle, even though Odysseus had warned them specifically not to. Yeah, brother-in-law problems. So first question, does that prove a lack of trust? Evidence always has to prove the claim. Yeah, absolutely. I am seeing that he definitely is not trusting Odysseus. Next question. Is that correctly cited? Yeah, you betcha. You have Homer at the end. It's all one sentence, so you only need the one citation. So that is correct. Next question. Is it correctly embedding the words. Yes, I actually love the embedding here because you've got multiple little fragments that are put right into the middle of the student sentence. So that's looking really awesome. So our claim works, could be rephrased a little, but it works. <coughs> Excuse me. The evidence is awesome. So what do we think about the commentary? If the crew had really trusted Odysseus, they would have taken, they would not have taken such imp uh, imprudent advice from Eurycles. Yeah, Eurylochus. I hate these names. Okay. So first question, do you have a reasoning type? Yep, that if, if they had trusted him, you're contrasting them with what the, they would have done if they had trusted him when they didn't. So that's contrast. Okay, next question. Do you tie back to does not trust? Do you go back to your opening claim? So what do you think? Yep, there you go right there. So a lot of you guys that had even longer arguments, you didn't have that nice, tight, clean argument structure with claim evidence commentary. So this really works very well. Now, 
Could it have been beefed up a little bit? Sure. So if they had trusted Odysseus, what would they have done? Well, you're not really being very specific, so you could give some more details there. If the crew had really trusted Odysseus, they would have listened to his advice and gone without food. They would have waited as long as was necessary to avoid angering the gods based off of Odysseus's commandments. Instead, they were imprudent enough to take advice from Odysseus's second in command brother-in-law who clearly is having issues with him. Don't get in the middle of family fights. That would be a good rule. But this certainly works quite well. That's a solid argument. You ready for another one? Okay. So Odysseus smarts outweigh the risk he takes. Even though Odysseus was warned against it, he gambled by wanting to listen to the majestic sounds of the sirens. These sirens were dangerous and killed many by distraction. To protect himself, he had his men tie his hand and foot onto the ship so he could hear but not look. If he was not as intelligent as he is, he would not have had the idea of being tied down, prevent him from being diverted and jumping off board to meet the sirens. So let us go through step by step. Claim. What do you think of the claim? Okay. It needs a little bit of rewording, but it actually is, it is debatable and it is the student's opinion. So Odysseus's intelligence outweighs the risks he takes. Okay. So what do you think of his evidence. First question, how well does that support the opening claim? Yeah, it does show that his intelligence is, is outweighing his risk-taking behavior. And I would probably call that risk-taking behavior. Okay, next question. How good is the citation? Oh, here we have a problem. Remember, every sentence that gives a specific detail has to be cited. Oh. And here, the citation is in a really weird place in the middle of the sentence. Don't do that. So you tuck the comma inside the quotation marks. And the citation goes at the end. Yeah. Okay, so we did have citation issues there. My next question is, how well are the quote fragments embedded? Excellent. Yep. They did a good job here, including changing it from my to his and knowing how to do that with square brackets. So the quotes really are embedded nicely here. So there was a major issue with the citations, but other than some awkwardness with how it's phrased, the argument is really holding together quite well. Now let's take a look at the commentary. What do you think of the commentary? First question, does it have a type of reasoning? Yep, contrast. If he hadn't been intelligent. Um, now, the problem here is, and sometimes students are like, wow, that just sounds weird. Here's why it's sounding weird. You have too many knots going. Do you remember how up top I said it's always better to say what something is rather than what something is not? You have so many knots going on here that it makes it hard to follow the logic. So there actually is the reasoning type here. It's a contrast. So instead of saying if he was not as intelligent, maybe we'd say something like if he was stupid.
And you can see how that's much tighter and the logic is much easier to follow now. If he was stupid, he would not have had the idea of being tied down to prevent him from being diverted. And it's not diverted. It's slightly wrong word choice there uh, to prevent him from jumping. It's not off board. It's overboard. I have no idea why I just capitalized that other than I'm an idiot overboard to meet the sirens. Okay. So next question, does that go back to intelligence outweighs risks? Well, this is a little tricky. You have two ideas in your claim. You are talking about intelligence and you are talking about risks. Do you go back to your claim? Well, I see the concept of intelligence. Do I see the concept of risks? I actually don't. So this is partially tied back to that opening, but not fully. And that's one of the reasons why it's so short. Um, because here I said you could make it a little bit longer, but here you would really need to in order to tie back to all of the ideas in that opening claim. So if he was stupid, he would not have had the idea of being tied down to prevent him from jumping overboard to meet the sirens. He certainly takes risks. And another hero probably would have died But because he is so smart, he is able to think up solutions to get through the danger. Now, I have risks. Another hero, so I'm not just contrasting against what he would have done, you know, if he were stupid. I'm also contrasting him against another hero. Smart danger. If you have two ideas in a claim, that means you have two ideas you have to tie back to in your commentary. So now this is much, much stronger. How are you feeling on this? Let's do one more. Odysseus's intelligence is overcredited. This is because he did not warn his men of Scylla. Uh, this is because he did not warn his men of Scylla. His reasoning was she was a threat to which there was no remedy. Although Circe told him to call out for Scylla's mother who would restrain the monster. If Odysseus told his men about the dangers of Scylla, they would have been more cautious and Odysseus could have reduced his casualties. Claim, what do you think? Yeah, it is, that is definitely debated. Now I will say instead of overcredited, which you're going for there is overrated. So again, it's, you know, you just got to be careful with how you're phrasing things. So yeah, his intelligence is overrated. Okay. So let's take a look at the evidence. First question. What do you think of the citation? Wah, wah. We need to have citation here. So that is a problem. Now, because it's not cited, technically this was plagiarism. You have to be careful with that. Now, the most important thing in terms of logic, does this fact prove that his intelligence is overrated? Yes, it does. Now, it overstates it a little bit because what Circe said is once Scylla has, you know, eaten six of your guys, call out to her mother to keep her from swooping down again. Um, but certainly, 
she has a, th this writer has a really good point that she is not as much of a danger. Scylla isn't as perhaps Odysseus is treating her that if Scylla's mother is around, that there's a way to control Scylla and Odysseus is not smart enough to kind of figure out how to manipulate that. So yeah, absolutely. This is showing that there's maybe his intelligence is overrated. Next question. How good is the embedding? Okay. We have a problem with the she. His reasoning was that uh, she was a threat and that is embedded correctly now. But here's a problem. You now have a capital letter in the middle of a word and you cannot do that. Now, I'm going to assume that because it's in square brackets originally, perhaps there was a name here. I haven't gone to look it up. But because it is square brackets, I am going to change the grammar to make it fit. Now, the other thing you need to know, let's say that originally you had she and all you wanted to do was change one letter. If you are changing just like capital letter, you can simply put one letter into brackets. But you can't have Oops, sorry, wrong bracket. You can't have a capital letter in the middle. You can't do it. Okay, commentary. First question, do you have a type of reasoning? Yes, you do. It's contrast reasoning, okay? If Odysseus had told his men, so he didn't, so you're contrasting against what could have been, but wasn't. Next question. Does it go back to the opening claim? And here's where we have a problem. The commentary is all focused on his lack of caution. But this is focused on intelligence. So those two things don't actually match. So you have to make sure that whatever trait you say up front, that that's what you're coming back to in commentary. If Odysseus were as smart as he is always claiming, he would have found another solution. If, as Circe said, Scylla's mother could control her, then a smart man might have searched for that mother and found a way to get her help. But Odysseus wasn't smart enough to do that. Now it is much more focused on intelligence. Whereas before the top, oops, it's not what I wanted. There you go. Before the top was focused on intelligence, but the bottom was focused on a lack of caution. So you want to make sure that your claim and your commentary, the two C's, should match. You should make sure that you are focused on that same trait. And if you notice, when I do commentary, my commentary is generally as long, possibly longer than my evidence. So make sure that you are not doing too little in that commentary. You want to make sure that you're really explaining yourself. The other thing is, I know that in when I gave the sample, the contrast I used was a contrast against what isn't real. So if Odysseus were smart, but you can also contrast against 
other events that have happened or other characters. So you could say something like, if Odysseus were as smart as Jason from Jason and the Argonauts, he would have found a solution. When Jason needed to get past a monster, he knew to seduce the girl who had the answers. But Odysseus doesn't go seeking out women who might have solutions for him, such as Scylla's mother. Instead, he just tries plowing through it because he's acting like a pretty typical macho hero who thinks that his sword can solve it. So you could contrast against, you know, Odysseus himself. If Odysseus were smart, here's what he would have done. Or you could actually contrast him against someone else like another hero that you think is smarter. So hopefully that helped you a little bit. What I want you to do is I want you to go back and take a look at your arguments. How well did you do in the two practice arguments you have written so far?